town of Deserano was named after John Deserano, a Mohawk captain in the British Army during the Revolutionary War. He settled here in 1784 along with 20 families. In 1837, John Deserano's grandson, John Colerson, inherited land and began selling lots away along the shore of the Mohawk Bay. By 1889, the town of Deserano was incorporated. The town had become a hub of industry, and nearly 4,000 souls lived here. Deserano is a beautiful community. It's very picturesque. It's quiet. It is not uh, a suburban big city. It's, uh, it has its own personality. It has uh, a sense of cohesiveness. It's next to the lake, which I love. The town of Deserano has yet to fully realize the potential of its beautiful waterfront on its southern flank. Over the years, the town has invested in the modern infrastructure and continues to upgrade it today. However, there are signs in one much for them that Deserano has suffered, despite efforts to turn things around. No, look what you have. Look what you have. You've got great parks. You've got a great main street. Um, the buildings are absolutely out of this world. From Mill Street in the center of town to the eastern boundary of Deserano, the Mohawk cling to the Gulfstream Track encompasses most of Deserano and its downtown area. Until this claim was settled, all the people of Deserano can do is wait and see. This is equally frustrating to the residents of the town and Mohawk so like as this decision is made at the federal level. Though the Mohawks have generally been patient, there are reminders of the resolve they have and the limit of that patience. You have to go forward and you have to live your life and the most important thing is that you have to have a sense of community and that's why I fell in love with this town gotten along for 300 years and that most of the problem is from the government levels above us, that we could sort this out if we were left alone. <laughs>